Welcome to the Popcorn drunk Drunkies. Drunkies. We're Popcorn Junkies, don't mess with us. Okay, this is a review of Civil War. Yes, indeed. Alex Garland's Civil War. Let's just spend a brief moment on Alex Garland, shall we? Let's do it. He did Ex Machina. Which we love. One of the most sensational AI tech. I'll watch that again, actually. I'd like to watch that again. <coughs> he, did, he did Annihilation. Oh. My boyfriend's Which, favourite film ever. Really? Is yeah. it? And you girls came to that before me, actually, and then and then I came to it. And it was I, I like lots in it. Then he did Men. Ah, yes, of course. With Olivia Colman. No, not really? Olivia Colman. No, 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 Jesse Buckley. Yeah, that unsettled me so much. So unsettling. And again, when it was good, it was great. But there were some weird yeah, had, moments. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Had good moments in there. And this is Civil War. Obviously, he was the writer of things like 28 Days Later. I think he wrote the book, The Beach, which became the Leonardo DiCaprio film, directed by Danny Boyle. He's worked with Danny Boyle a lot, so he's part of the whole 28 Days Later sort of thing. Um, so this is his latest film, Civil War. It comes from A24. And it has quite a sort of low-key, I would say, cast, insofar as they're great actors. Mm. But they're sort of character actors, aren't they? They're not really sort of yeah. massive household names. So you've got the biggest stars, Kirsten Dunst. Um, you've got Kaylee Spaney. I don't know if that's how you pronounce her name. Kaylee Spaney. Uh, who played Priscilla. She's in there. Uh, you've got Nick Offerman playing the uh, president. And you've got, uh, well, then everyone is talking about Jesse Plemons' moment. What was the name of the, the guy, the, the press photographer? Wagner Demura. Wagner Demura. He's a Brazilian actor. He, was he looked good. so familiar the whole time. And of course, the other great actor that we all love is Stephen McKen McKinley Henderson, mm. who was in recently seen in June when his eyes go. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite cool. I thought it was kind of intriguing that this film landed on the same day, or the same weekend, that Donald Trump not was in court, not for his riot on Capitol Hill, but he's in court, and Donald Trump's very much seen as the president who kind of oversaw almost a revolution. Yeah. Right? What's curious about this as well, so the timing is, is curious, a lot of people got very excited when I reacted to the trailer saying, this is what's going to happen. This is, this is, America's future is inscribed in this film. This could be a big moment <coughs> yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So it has a certain, there's a believability mm. factor in there. Um, and the other detail about it that's kind of odd is it's directed by a Brit. Yeah. 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 Odd. So what is it? It's a, an action thriller, dystopian thriller, in which for probably, it's not often you get a dystopian where you haven't got zombies, creatures, Yeah, but there fungals. isn't like a, yeah. A realistic one, I guess. <laughs> exactly, the baddies are the people. The film at the front sort of sets up that there's conflict, America's in split, you've got California and Texas are kind of one army. Quite like the detail of the American flag, which is two stars. Mm. There's only two I'm states. Just yeah, and they're essentially rebelling against the president. And I think, though it doesn't go to great lengths to explain this to us, it's kind of inferred that the president and those in control of America are more Trumpian mm. than they are sort of liberal. Yeah. Like, because so many of the troops that we, we're with rebelling are mm. black and of ethnic minority. And so the film got going and it started in a sort of scene of conflict. I, I like the beginning. I thought the beginning yeah. was very arresting. You know, that moment where they're sort of you're thinking, what's the conflict? What's going yeah. on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see a woman kind of. You were very quickly plunged into. Into carnage. And, and we had a sort of suicide bomber holding an American flag aloft, didn't we? Mm. I was struggling right at the beginning of this film to make sense of the politics. Right. Did that matter, Maddie? Um, personally, for me, yeah, I mean, I didn't really know what was going on politically and what the situation was. <clears throat> and I'd say for like a split second, it was bothering me a bit. Because yes. I, like, I would just like to know, like, set in stone what it is that I did. is causing this. But I felt like I quite quickly let go of that. Like, right. there was like a moment where I was like, oh, I'd like, what? what What's going yeah, who's on? who's who? Um, but then I thought I might have missed something, so then I like turned to you and was like, wait, what's Well, that? when you asked me that, I thought, God, have I missed something? Yeah, um, maybe we both did, you know. For me, like, after feeling that way, I, I very quickly kind of just gave into it, and I quite ended up actually quite liking that we didn't fully know what the reason for this. I think you're was. right, and I think some of the criticism he's coming for is that he kind of fudged it, or he, he right. some people are describing it as a, a sort of, not cowardly as in cowardly, but sort of, he dodged the difficulties of actually engaging with what is a, you know, America is genuinely in a political hellhole of divide. Yeah. It's incredibly complicated. And mm. some are suggesting that he doesn't really, he purposefully almost doesn't give us the details of that mm. so that he can't be seen to be siding too much. Really? I think that might be reading into it a bit too. I agree. And I also think the 
very thing that you've just said there, Maddie, is that by the end of the film, so this is kind of a guide to seeing it, you will strive for coherence politically. Mm. I think when we get to what the film is really about, I think it's actually, I think it's actually important that we don't know yeah. what they're fighting about, because it's people fighting. And mm. I think that in a weird way, I think what you'll find in what we've got to say about the film, that's kind of interesting in itself. Yeah. Um, we get, I thought it was a really neat setup. So you had this explosion and we'd set up Nick Offerman, who's the president. Mm -hmm. I thought that was not, I thought there was something very, thinking back to that moment, it's just a profile shot of him. Obviously he's about Fussy, to do an address. Yeah. And did you notice on the last moment when he went for the address, he had such an evil smirk on his face. Mm. And so there's some, Nick Offerman's not in it for long, but he's very subtle and it's very yeah, clever. It's, it's really... one of those films that by rewatching you might get a bit more positive. Yeah, I, I feel like, I would want to rewatch this film, just know what to look out for as second watch. So effectively, we're on journey with four characters. Lee? Lee, yeah, Lee, our main photographer. Uh, the Wagner Moura guy uh, who's with her. Uh, a lovely, lovely Stephen McKinley Henderson um, guy from the New York Times. And a young wannabe whippersnapper yes. photographer. They're all at a hotel, they're all getting together, and they all want to basically head to DC and get an interview with the president. Um, and I like that, I like the simplicity Ambitious. of Ambitious. Amb yes, as they say, it's ambitious. And they head off, and it becomes a road movie. It's weird, I, I was getting real road movie vibes. Yeah, it was a bit like a road, yeah. I mean, as soon as you hit the road, you had that... Yeah, I liked that. Yeah, it was kind of odd that I, I think one of the things that also troubled me at the front of this was, I didn't really know what it was asking me to feel. And I don't know if that was kind of a good thing or a bad thing, because I was thinking, oh, this seems a bit lighthearted. Oh, this seems a bit kind of on the road again. And then it was like, oh no, the people are fucking blowing themselves up. Yeah, I know what you mean, but I don't know, it's weird. I've, I feel like I didn't, because I, I know what you're saying with that, and I agree, like, there were, it would change its kind of tone and, and its rhythm, vibe a lot. Kind of, yeah. But I think, like, that worked, that it kept changing its yeah. tone and its rhythm. Yeah. Because like we said when we came out, but obviously we'll go, like, into more detail a bit, but I yeah. ended up feeling like the film is more about how desensitised the press or, like, war photographers um, get after, you know, seeing such seeing awful much. traumatic yeah. things um, one after the other so i felt like you know when we would see something really traumatic happen and then it would kind of be like <laughs> cut off by this kind of fun yeah road trip music yes. it worked for me in this it, it kind of weirdly made me as the watcher see something really traumatic and then go oh on the road again you know oh, right. a bit desensitized like that's interesting they were to a certain extent um yeah, you're right, because because you do get on the road again. <laughs> and as they're on the road again, you start to see a battered and disrupted and sort of dystopian kind of America that they go through towns. And, and they have like, there's almost like chapters yeah. throughout the movie where they meet one thing and then another yeah. thing and then another it's thing. Very pretty episodic. much all these stop off points, something, something pretty happened. gruesome or like you know, tra traumatic happens. But they did a good thing right at the beginning in the character setting. I thought it was really quite challenging, challenging in a good way. Custer Dunst's character, Lee, was very unlikable at the beginning. I found yeah, yeah, it really yeah. harsh, but what was really good about that is when you meet war photographers and journalists in war zones, they're like that. They have to be. I found that I found her difficult to settle into. Mm. So that when you had the young whippersnapper of Kaylee Spenny who'd hitched a lift, who from the get go was driving me fucking she nuts. She really annoyed me. How in annoying a, in, was in she? like a she did a great job oh, yeah. as, of the character, but just as if like her character was yeah, it was annoying. Well, she was like a hyperactive toddler. She was, yeah. And she had a spine she was an aspirational, you know, photographer. She wanted to be like Lee, um, but obviously like seeing a lot of these things for the first time. So yes. like really reacting to them and being traumatised yeah. and like crying and throwing up and then leaves like obviously like, Yeah and in a weird way the film is almost <laughs> I mean Kaylee Spenny's character is almost a the origin story of Lee's character. Yeah you, you it's know. like um the older guy is saying throughout like oh she's she's like oh what are you gonna say she's just like me when I when yes. I was her age yes. like, oh, and there was, I did like the fact between the three older people, you know, the three older journalists, photographers, there was that camaraderie, which I've felt and had in the past when you know the same photographers. They, there is a community, yeah. they all do know each other. Uh, and they are all kind of ultimately hunting after the ultimate photo and the ultimate image. And so you've got this band. And what was also good was so I got, liked the relationship. Yes. Between one of them. You got very attached though to our uh, New York Times Stephen McKinley Henderson character. Didn't I always you? I love him in everything I see him in. He's just got such a just want to look after lovely him. nature about him. But yeah, especially in this, I was yeah. like, just had that feeling. I was like, oh. and I love the way they kept foregrounding the fact that he was old and that he was large and that he couldn't move quickly. So you're immediately thinking this guy's a sitting duck. 
quite literally, when this shit yeah. kicks off, he's finished. Yeah. And there's a lovely twist about that later. Um, and I also like the fact that they parked a really sinister scene, I thought, with Wagner Mura, where he and Kay Spenny, it was a bit... Yeah, it was a bit of... weird. But then we also found out that, like, before he kind of, because he's the one that let her come on the yes. road trip, he was like drunk and flirting with her that whole night. So he's a bit of a... Bit of a, a cat. Bit of a, yeah, yeah. Bit of a cat. So what's you know, like... He drinks and smokes pretty much throughout and all that. Yeah. But I did... Although that scene was a bit like, oh god, man. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I did yeah. like his character. But it was very believable. And I thought it, it was, was, yeah. It was nicely done. And I think, when looking back at it, I think you're, you really are parked within a sort of almost amoral group. Though there is morality, certainly in the older character a moral group of we're out to get the story, we're out to get the image. And, and I think there was a big debate in anyone who's worked in the media about what does it take, what do you have to be in order to take the photo and not step in to help? Yeah. And we get a little montage, which um, <clears throat> was quite a functional montage, where we saw uh, Lee's form, you know, uh, Kirsten Dunst's previous... All the, um, like... Yeah, and the, um, they were really traumatic. I mean, there were some Especially moments the of this. the fire one, the guy getting himself on. Really, yeah, really, really, really dark and arresting. And then you're right, we move into sort of set-piece journey, set-piece journey as they're trying to get also, closer to DC. Yeah, I also wanted to say, like, throughout the film, I loved the photographs that we take because they would do these really cool things you know, we were kind of in the scene and we would see them kind of with their cameras taking photos of it and then every now and then like when you know that they got the shot mm. um it would like cut to the photograph that they managed to take and uh, whenever that would happen i like genuinely forgot i was watching the movie and it felt like i was watching real photos of like actual violence and actual stuff mm. happening so every time mm. the photo was taken i was like oh that's a good one like, yeah, yeah, yeah. um but i really liked how they did that how it would just be like this yeah, it was a really Sunny neat device, and, like, and it was really, it was quite a clever sort of thematic device because what it did every time was, as humans, we watch a scene of violence or there's, there's a shootout, isn't there, and a yeah. kind of housing estate, yeah, yeah. and you're yeah, rooting for the guy who's behind the kind of you know column, and then you know the photographers are just there taking photos. They've all got press on them. It all says press, you know, and uh, and you know you see the photos, and I, I, you are, you're thinking, oh my god, how can you take the photo? And then another part of you is thinking, yes, it's important to take the photo because. It needs to be shown, it needs to be documented. And I think this film, interestingly, is about the ego, actually, of photographers, because there is a competition, and we, that really comes into sharp focus at the yeah. end of the film. But it's also, it is also about, who are they doing this for? I, one of the things I did have a problem with in this film, and I think it is a criticism, I accept that I didn't need the political full yeah. portrait. What I didn't really believe or buy into was who were they getting these photos for? There had to be a publication. Okay, they were all working for them, the New York Times. I felt that America seemed in such desolate mess. I, I agree, I felt that. <laughs> like, who are they buying like, these into? Yeah, where, where, where will this be yeah. coming from? Because like, the whole place... I mean, maybe the rest of the world? And maybe parts... I mean, maybe the other part of the idea is maybe huge parts of America are sort of functioning quite normally. But it's well, a, which we kind of saw, didn't we? Yeah, a little they bit. Enter, yeah, but yeah. Like, even that had its... You know, and it's I think a really I, cool shot with Oh my scene. god, yeah, we'll get to that. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I sort of quite quickly, I was, I, you know, I felt the tug of war between, oh, taking a photo, being in a terrible scenario. But it took this really jovial, and you're right, it, this, the music really, it was a really interesting use of music, which I'm still kind of not totally certain worked for me. Mm. Especially in that moment where the, the guy was behind the column and they get shot and she gets yeah. that beautiful photo. Beautiful, it's awful, he's, he's dying. Mm, it was um, a beautiful face. And then they take the other guys out over there and they get and rid they of them. And they shoot them and there's the music. And the just tri tripping along. And the along. guy is just like laughing with the guy that just shot a cigarette. Them. And then I thought, God, yeah, no, this is not a film about civil war. This is a film about the coverage yeah. of these things. Yeah. How we film these things, how we process images mm. and desensitization. I mustn't forget there's a scene at the beginning where they stop at a petrol station and Kaylee Spenny's character goes off around the back. Come on. Quite a she... few moments where she's an absolute idiot and it oh. really bothered me. And Dags would be like, oh, come on. Oh. It... And it would just... Oh, my God, Fucking that hell, that sounded like an explosion. This much sun. Civil war. Because she's kind of the reason for all of the Everything bad going stuff wrong. that happens in it. Because yeah. uh, of her just being an idiot. She looks so, about six as well. It's quite she's hard. She's so to, young, yeah. yeah it's quite she's probably twenty-three. That's but right. She looked twelve. Oh, she was so annoying. But so look, and so they get closer and closer and closer, and we move through various setups. Um, we have this sort of strange tone, which is both breezy, but also serious. I, I would say it was breezier more than serious, and that's a challenge. 
But I think it's, I like anything that's challenged me. So mm. I'm still processing that. I'm still trying to work yeah. out that one. Yeah. It's a road movie. It doesn't really have a soundtrack. Other than no. The, no, no, it doesn't. It really the, doesn't. Um, song, was, actual songs they play. Yeah, exactly. I Which I didn't feel like it needed because I felt like all the scenes kind of set, was set up enough. There was enough kind of going on in every scene. Mm. So that I feel like if there was like a soundtrack going on underneath of the time, I'd kind of find it just a bit too much and there's always there's a fine line between a soundtrack that's kind of massaging your response and the, and the action actually selling. i mean i think one of the things it did allow for was that you know you haven't got monsters in this you haven't got aliens you haven't got ai but you have got the brutality bare brutality if you like of bullets yeah and i think bullets in this were fucking hell that moment oh, yeah. shot in the press i don't box. know if our cinema was extra loud but yeah. every time there was like a any loud thing yeah. even just a helicopter flying over a jump out with Absolutely. So the first moment I the first set piece that really stood out for me as a really kind of I thought, oh, this is this is really mm, the was winter the Winter Wonderland. Wonderland yeah. you know? And they, they rock up to this place, which is, has it been Christmas in this field for like a year or something? Yeah, it's just like an old setup for like a little Winter Wonderland. But then like in the middle of the path is soldier that's brains being blown out, right, which is quite there, clearly a warning sign to not go down that path. I feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, so you had that. And, and what was nice about that was obviously the counter. So you've got literally, yeah. in fact, that was one of the few moments when that music was going, wasn't it? Yeah, Living I think so. Living in the winter oh, wonderland yeah, yeah, or something yeah. like that. <laughs> and then they discover these two guys, these sniper guys. Yeah. And it's that famous shot that you see with all kind of sort of furry stuff on his car. And I thought that scene you, you pointed out, that moment for me was sensational. Mm. It was stressful. It was but dangerous. Like, but then there was just... And it was like they were just so desensitised, yeah, so it was it was quite a funny scene because they were just bantering and hashing. And when Kaylee Smenny asks a question and he looks over the gun and says, who's in that? They're trying to take a target out of the house, yeah. you know. And weirdly, so many moments were sort of ended without any sort of conclusion. So like, they shot, there was a shot and then yeah, they were back they in were the car. Yeah, yeah. So you didn't sort of get, which again was kind of, there's many things in this film that kind of jar, but not necessarily for totally bad reasons. But let's get to the point. There's a moment in this film, which we all knew from the trailer. And in fact, that moment in the trailer was why I wanted to go and see this film. Yeah, and what was that honest. moment, Matt? It was just quite something, wasn't it? It was Jesse Plemons. Jesus Christ. And of course, he's Kirsten Dunst's partner. Apparently, she convinced him to do they're it. They're together? Yeah, oh. they're a couple, dino couple. Um, but yeah, so... We, I mean, we love Jesse Plemons in everything, so even things. if I don't like the, the thing he's in or whatever. Yeah, or the character, he's just always phenomenal. But yeah, I mean, this scene was just oh. like, it delivered, if not even more than I thought it would. Yeah, okay. that, that was the bit that I was like really excited about. Like almost, even though I was enjoying the film, I was kind of there just like, when's the Jesse Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's quite a short scene, but it feels long just because of how um, just like stressful and, it was honestly, I found it the scariest scene mm. when actually compared to like other scenes within it, probably so, not as much. Yeah, like, like the it, first it one at the petrol station was particularly yeah, potentially frightening. But like the Jesse Plemons scene was just so yeah. unsettling and so real. You know, you kind of, yeah. even when you see like documentaries or something in certain parts of America, there are characters like that. And it's just scary to think that, you know, wow. give them a bit of power and. And it was the lottery of what it was like. He goes around and you see it in the trailer. He says, what kind of American are you? He it's, like, he's, yeah, he's like questioning them on like whereabouts from America they are and whether it's American enough. And oh. obviously like, we can guess people that aren't American enough don't meet a very good And in that scene again, almost the sharpness and, the, and there's no use, the sound of the gun was, I mean, we were jumping out of our skins. No, it was. We've also had a scene just before it with Jesse, which denotes the fact that he's, clearly involved in particularly untoward stuff and yeah. and, and that kind of really really and, like, sets I, him up. I really liked the the bit before mm. um uh, without like giving too much away like we're, we're, we're in a situation where only the girl is like currently with jesse Plemons, and mm. the rest of them are figuring out how to kind of go and rescue her mm. once and again she's got herself into fucking trouble because we're doing something into, really fucking yeah, what was that about climbing into oh god um but then there was that moment where uh, the older guy, when they're all saying, you know, we're gonna, and he was like, no, like yeah, I am almost blessed. certain that this is a death <laughs> situation. Like, just don't do this. It's different and they were like, no, look, like he's wearing, you know, he's in. Oh yeah, he's, in fatigue, he's a soldier, yeah. so like it'll probably be all right. He goes, um, but I'm pretty sure what he's doing, he doesn't want anybody <laughs> to know he's doing. Yeah, so, and it involves um, a lot of bodies. Yeah. <laughs> Can I make a suggestion? Because I know it didn't bother you. I came out of the film thinking. 
But the reason that scene worked so well was because of Jesse Plemons, absolutely. He, he masterfully holds that scene. But also it was the moment where, most acutely, the idea of a politic, if you like, or politics crept into it. Because yeah, the whole of which American yeah, are you? And so I do wonder whether he did trip a little bit, um, Ale um, excuse me? <laughs> Alex Garland, by avoiding that elsewhere. Because I think by threading through this idea of do you tick the right boxes for these absolute sociopathic Trumpian types, yeah. you are in danger. That's the zombie, if you like. Yeah. Like, I'm not American yeah. enough. And so, this scene was driven by him. The, the setup guys, was gas brilliant. station were a bit like that as well. We got the all American. Yeah, exactly. But we didn't have that but political have contingent actual, to it, did yeah. we? No. So you didn't have the thing of what is the judgment here? Well, how does even your... within the gas station bit, like there are two men that are being hung up. Yeah. Like they're just like beaten up and hanging from yeah. the, uh, car wash. Yeah, yeah, the car wash. Yeah, the car wash. So I don't know. So part of me felt yes, this moment for me was a brilliant. It's worth the price of the ticket admission alone. But it also felt it was really lifted and elevated even more because mm. we had threaded into everything yeah. we were saying was, <gasps> oh, it's that yeah. kind of American thing. What yeah. is that all about? And we won't ruin how that scene ends, but put it this way, uh, help comes in the most unlikely of support. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have a very extended, protracted, almost saving Private Ryan type final. Uh, <laughs> it's gone from pure it's been every type of Yeah, we're in New Zealand. Right now. It's got hail and... Oh my God, it's hail again. Jesus Christ. And then we get to this protracted scene towards the end, which I thought, again, I actually thought the last 10 to 15 minutes of this film was excellent. Mm. I really, really liked Yeah, really the long end. sequence. Yeah. Um, and really it was the, really, it, it was well. the kind of siege of the White House. And stressful. So stressful and very <laughs> real. Very real. I felt, that's one thing I say about this film, like it all, yeah, it felt very real. Like yes. it felt like I was, like I said, and with the photos, I sometimes I would forget that I was, watching a fictional, you know, like yeah, a yeah, yeah. film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Felt like I was watching real life at points. Yeah. Which is why I think it was as, it could be as unsettling yes. as it was at times, because it just felt really real. Yeah. I mean, Kaylee spending all the way still is irritating the fuck out of me. She's constantly getting in the way. She's constantly in danger. Yeah. Anymore. She's pursuing the shop, pursuing the shop, pursuing very, the shop. Almost psychopathic she was. Sociopathic. Well, very by the end. Very sociopathic. And then we move into a very, very, I think, successful kind of, though some critics have said that because there's no real kind of political aspect, some people are describing that scene in the White House as being a little bit like a sort of point, uh, point uh, what's it called, first person call of duty. It was almost like, and there is a bit of that. There's a bit of that, but I... You know, like shoot, that. shoot <laughs> through the door. But it was stressful, and it was, i tell you the word that I would use for these action scenes, they were bare. They were bare of sound other than the essential sound. Yeah, that's why I, I, I think that's... Yeah, and I really liked that. Yeah, I really liked that. And then at the, towards the end, this strange sort of switch happens with Kaylee Spenny and Kirsten Dunst's character, where the yin and the yang, one takes over the other, a terrible moment happens, we won't spoil that moment for you. It's incredibly dramatic. And I couldn't help but feel that Kaylee Spenny was a nasty little fucker. Oh yeah. Or was she? Is I... that just what you need to be? Was Kirsten Dunst also a nasty little fucker throughout her career? Well, yeah, I mean, they're all like slightly become so, like, only because they've been desensitized by what they've seen. But to a certain extent, they're, yeah. They're, they're all nasty fuckers. Bit nasty. <laughs> yeah. I, there's a couple of Because you have to be, a, you have to shut off all yes. feelings and emotions towards a person. But I felt like that bit yeah. was next level because yes. a lot of what they're having to photograph and a lot of what they're having to witness. Without sounding like, but it's not people that they no. care about necessarily. No. Like no. they're strangers, which yes. is, you know is still awful. But you're able to like shut off yeah. the feelings. But what the difference was with the young girl was that that didn't happen first. No, it was like two so reverse they, stories. Yeah, they were like yeah. One softened. Uh, Kirsten Dunst's character softened, and Kelly Spenny's kind of hardened. hardened. And yeah, just to flash back for a moment, I think the cue or the moment where Kirsten Dunst's character started to sort of soften was that in that little strange beaten it town place where yeah. there was that wonderful moment where, where she I, got the dress. Yeah, where she got the dress and also where there was an indication as to the kind of people what you know that the, everyone's being watched and there are mm -hmm. soldiers and troops on top of buildings. I felt I could have done with a bit more of that. I wanted a bit more of context. I wanted a bit of a broader sense of the the, the threat at all times outside, yeah. you know, the unknowability. But the ending was great. The last quote you loved. Oh my God. With, with the, the last quote in my head, I said like, "Oh, I really hope he says." They need this. a quote from the president. And then don't he they? said it, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah what a quote from the president, guys!" <laughs> Will it be enough though? Is it the right quote? 
Okay, so let's go to summing up. Well, the main reason I wanted to see this genuinely was because of Jesse Fleming's moment in the trailer. Yeah. It all looked, you know, good, but that really got me. I was like, oh, goosebumps. So, um, uh, other than that, I was a bit blind as to what I was mm. kind of coming into. And, you know, when it started, still felt a little bit blind as to what I was going into because there wasn't much explanation from the beginning, which I understand is bothering. I think just for me personally, it didn't bother me. Like, it worked for me. It didn't keep um, snagging you. Yeah, no. but I understand, like, why it would. Yeah, I liked the use of little music and usually like soundtracks are the biggest thing for me with movies, yeah. but I've realized I'm not much of like an action packed <laughs> love, film lover. I'm not thrilled, and I think I've realized that a lot of that is because there's music going on at the same time and I literally just get overstimulated. So I quite liked that it was in, that it was, they just kept the real sound of what was That's kind of going on, like the reality of it. Yeah. Like you said, you feel like A24 is going to do like a book of all the photographs. Yeah, the still. And I kind of hope they do because the photographs are really cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought the performances from everyone were really good to be honest I can't I can't think of any moment where I was like oh I really liked how I think I felt it quite quickly how it was more a film about the press and how they mm. kind of deal with this kind of stuff and how they're mm. desensitized um, rather than it being like about the war and I think that's maybe why I wasn't as bothered about not knowing what the I think that completely wrong footed me. I think yeah. I was going in about the war. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, I think the thing is, I didn't go in with much of an expectation yeah, about yeah. what. Obviously, it's called civil war, but in my head, didn't really like <laughs> think about it. Yeah, like, honestly, I, I, I really enjoyed it. It, mm. it stressed me out. I felt a lot of things while watching it. You know, I, I think I cried. I jumped out of my skin. I was shocked. I was, yeah, it made me feel a lot. Good of result things, the cinema. Pretty much what a film should do. So I would rate it. It's going to be quite high. Oh, yeah. I think like a solid 90 out of 100. Oh, wow, that's interesting. That's, that's good. Two. Okay, okay. You're right. I think I was almost hampered by my the, the intimate interest I have in American politics and society. So I was striving for a political contingent. And I Maybe think you should it, watch it again. Now yeah, exactly. Again. And Maddie's on the money. This is a film about the desensitizing traumatic impacts and impact of being a war photographer or a war journalist. And that's a curious, it's very much about that. Yeah. Um, you know, and in a weird way, the very, as you rightly again said, you know, by letting go of who's fighting who, I think what's more telling about this is that people are fighting people. Mm. And in many regards, the disorientation of not knowing who's fighting who adds to that. Like I think I said to you when we came out, it was like, it almost worked because I think like in the reality of it, there's probably some people involved in it who've lost what the reason of the war was. Entirely good That point. happens so often. Where yeah, yeah, you're goes, fighting for the sake of it. It's so intense and it goes on so long and everyone's so involved that you just go, wait, what yeah. was the thing we were mad about? Totally again? agree. So, Totally agree. I thought the, the, the three most obvious set pieces that stood out to me were, were the moment in Winter Wonderland, was the Jesse Clemens, was also the White House assault, most beautifully, though I say beautiful, I'm now doing what war photographers do, the moment where the uh, essentially the, the president's press spokesperson gets shot in a brilliant moment where it's being filmed and we cut to a, the photograph. I thought that was sensational. The, this is going to sound really odd. One major problem I had with the entire film, and this is going to sound really odd, I've made a film <clears throat> with photographers for Nat Geo in the past. I've been photographing in kind of pretty, you know, hurly-burly situations with film cameras and sometimes with stills cameras. And one of the things that was really irking me was that I didn't feel, and I don't feel, that I think Kirsten Dunst more than Kaylee Spenny. Kaylee Spenny looked like an actor with a camera, often. I don't right. think she, there was, and, and that's a believability thing, but there is something, when you are a photographer in these things, you are far more, and I know she was learning her way, but even the way they were holding their cameras, both her and Kirsten, they were, it was too obviously signposted or foregrounded. I think it needed to be a little bit more kind of embedded in the movement. A lot of great, great war photography is often taken on the sly, on the snide, out of thing, mm. around a thing, up of thing. You know, not in this step out, take a photo. Well, there's right, a bit too yeah. much step out and take a photo. And they were, they, yeah. were, they were dodging the bullets much more than the people with the guns and everything else. Yeah, yeah. So there was that, that was a bit of an issue for me. Mm. I, successful or not, Kelly Spenny, I literally, hated her <laughs> but that's a good thing for the film it's not like you hate her that it makes it a bad film and especially when you get to the last scene oh my god you just think you know i wanted to punch her on it smack her face in absolutely and she was just like oh my god brilliantly shot curious use, use of music so all of these all of those things told all of those things said oh finally i found myself constantly thinking about wow isn't it interesting that we can talk about how the press can still be protected 
in a fictional civil war of such untold violence in America. But if you've got a press jacket on in Gaza, you'll be shot straight away. Interesting that, isn't it? Um, so it really speaks to some of the crises we're going through now and more. If I was to score it, that's interesting that you said 90 to 92. I would give it 89. Oh, that's, that's... Which is up there, yeah. absolutely. Um, I think I think we I can figure what you go in to see. Forget the civil war aspect, in a way, yeah. and think about people and how they deal with violence and mm. cover that violence. Yeah. I, I, yeah. A bit lower than you, because I could have done with a little bit more kind of yeah. context. I wanted to know, who the fuck are they doing these photos for? Just for themselves? <laughs> For their Instagram even? That would have been quite telling if it was just for them. <laughs> you know, if you discovered there's not even a publication, it's like, oh, this is ego. Mm. They just want the best shot. Yeah. Anyway, all that said, go and see it. Go see it.